Tom, can you hear me? Good morning. I can hear you. What's going on? Oh, we're not getting any audio. Yeah, the uh, audio person has just come in and hasn't started yet. Ah. But I really, thanks for letting me know. I'm Do glad we? That okay. People uh, paying attention. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>
And again. Amen. Good morning, Good Shepherd family gathered here in the sanctuary and those of you who are joining us online. Welcome to worship on this fourth Sunday after Pentecost. Oh, a couple of announcements before we begin. <clears throat> One, right after the deacon gives the announcements for the day, she will ask if there are any announcements from the community. At that time, if you have any announcements, you can, do you have a mic today? At that time, <clears throat> you can stand and give your announcement. Um, for those of you who are online, you can put them in the chat and they will be announced here in the sanctuary. And the same thing applies during our intercessory prayers. When the deacon asks for what else do the people pray, you are welcome to speak your prayers aloud if you so desire. So today in our text, we will hear that God is the source of our nourishment. The invitation from Jesus to take and eat take and drink is one that we hear repeated often in worship. We hear it in Holy Communion. We hear it in the word that is read and proclaimed in this assembly of God's beloved people. The dominion of God has come near, so we should rejoice. We should rejoice and let all things we do be to the honor and glory of God. Let us begin with our call to worship. We are called together this day to praise God. We ask that God will put us in pathways to service to each others. The Lord will walk with us as we faithfully witness to Christ's love. Open our hearts, Lord, to receive your words and will. Come, let us worship God. Let us sing our praises to God, our Redeemer and Healer. Amen. Beloved, secure in the promise of God's knowledge of us and trusting in God's readiness to forgive, let us confess our sin to God and to one another. Spirit of the living God, temptation surrounds us. Self-preservation lures us 
to indifference. Fear of confrontation coaxes us to keep silent about things that matter. The desire to be right entices us to ignore the cries of our neighbors. Too often we ignore the call to go and to be in favor of staying stuck in our attitudes and behaviors. Too often we are ones who refuse to welcome you into our intimate space, who resist the work of transformation and who remain unresponsive to the burdens of our siblings and creation. Spirit of gentleness, redirect us back to the path of life, the way of justice and the hope of peace. Amen. Hear the good news, beloved. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Thanks be to God and amen. We will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his court with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me. This is the day. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. We will rejoice. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord hath made. Amen, amen. <clears throat> the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, the love of Christ which guards our hearts and minds, and the joy and consolation of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. You may be seated. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and to praise 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. And help save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Let us pray. God with us, you send us into the world as your agents of restoration and change. You speak to us in the stillness of our rest and the chaos of a frenzied world. You guide us in troubling times and you move us to dance in celebration. We give thanks for your presence among us. Open all points of receptive, receptivity sorry, within us as we worship you, holy and living God. Amen. Okay, good morning again, and welcome to the fourth Sunday after Pentecost. The announcements are as follows. The confirmation class will be resuming within the next few weeks. If you have children, grandchildren, or friends, etc who are in grade six through high school, and they have not been confirmed, please email or call the church. We need your name and con uh, contact info and the names and grades of the participants. We are still in need of additional Sunday school and confirmation teachers. Please contact Pastor Linda if you are interested in fulfilling either of these roles. Experience is not necessary. We also want to continue offering a Black History Moment once each month. So we need your help. Please contact Pastor Linda by email or phone if you are willing to offer presentation. And even if you don't have an idea for a topic, Pastor Linda will be happy to assist. We have started our new study on Wednesday evenings. We will be using a resource from the ELCA, African Descent Strategy Initiative. It is titled Stories to Tell and Gifts to Share. We have a limited number of copies available for those who are committed to participating in our weekly study. Please contact the church office or Pastor Linda to receive your copy of this book. And so this is, anything to add, Pastor? Okay. <clears throat> if anyone has an announcement, you may say it at this time from the community, whether from the community or folks online, if you have an announcement, you know, this is a time to do it. Okay, moving on to the uh, calendar of uh, events. Oh. Good morning. Welcome back. 
Okay, now moving on to calendar of events. On Wednesday, July the 6th, at seven o'clock in the morning, we have Wednesday morning devotion and prayers on Zoom. And at 7 p.m. on Wednesday, we gather again for our uh, Bible study. And on Sunday, July 10th, which is the fifth Sunday after Pentecost, we will resume with our 10 a.m. worship in the sanctuary. This ends uh, the calendar of events and the announcement. Janet, please rise as you are able as we bless our lector for today. Amen. Call to mind the deeds of God as you listen to the spirit this day. Please join me as we play for our lector. Let us pray together. Holy One, prepare us to receive your word. Bless our lector Janet as she reads the scripture. Equip us to know your will, O God, as we strive to labor daily in the fields of your harvest. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. The first reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 66, verses 10 through 14. Those who returned from the exile found that the hopes of the glorious restoration of Judah were not completely fulfilled. For these disappointed people, the prophet envisions salvation in the image of a nursing woman. Mother Jerusalem and a mothering God remind the community how they are sustained and supported. Rejoice with, rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her. All you who love her, rejoice with her in joy. All you who mourn over her, that you may nurse and be satisfied from her consoling breast, that you may drink deeply with delight from her glorious bosom. For, for thus says the Lord, I will extend prosperity to her like a river and the wealth of the nations like an overflowing stream and you shall nurse and be carried on her arm and dandled on her knees. As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. You shall see and your heart shall rejoice. Your body shall flourish like the grass. And it shall be known that the hand of the Lord is with his servants and his indignation is against his enemies. Word of God, word of life. The psalm for today, Psalm 66 verses one through nine. All the earth bows down before you and sings out your name. Be joyful in God, all you lands. Be joyful, all the earth. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. Because of your great strength, your enemies cringe before you. Come now and see the works of God. How awesome are God's deeds toward all people. Ruling forever in might. God keeps watch over the nations. 
Let no rebels exalt themselves. Our God has kept us among the living and has not allowed our feet to slip. Second reading is from the book of Galatians, chapter six, verses one through 16. In the close of his letter to the Galatians, Paul encourages them to live as people made right with God through faith in Jesus Christ. Here, Paul offers practical advice about how believers exercise common concern for one another in the family of faith. My friends, if anyone is detected in a transgression, you who have received the spirit should restore such a, such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Take care that you yourselves are not tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. For if those who are nothing think they are, not, are something, they deceive themselves. All must test their own work. Then that work, rather than their neighbor's work, will become a cause for pride. For all must carry their own loads. Those who are taught the word must share in all good things with their teacher. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For, the, for, the, for you reap whatever you sow. If you sow to your own flesh, you will reap corruption from the flesh. But if you sow to the spirit, you will reap eternal life from the spirit. So let us not grow weary in doing what is right, for we will, keep, we will reap at a harvest time if we do not give up. So then whatever we have an opportunity, let us work for the good of all, and especially for those of the family of faith. See what large letters I make when I am writing in my own hand. It is those who want to make a good showing in the flesh that try to compel you to be circumcised, only that they may not be persecuted for the cross of Christ. Even the circumcised do not themselves obey the law, but they want you to be circumcised so that they may boast about your flesh. May I never boast of anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For, not, for neither circumcision nor uncircumcision is anything, but a new creation is everything. As for those who will follow this rule, peace be upon them and mercy and upon the Israel of God. Word of God, word of life. Please rise as you are able. Halle, halle, halle. Beloved of God, I invite you now to listen to the Holy, Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. After this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them out on ahead of him in pairs, in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask, 
Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in your in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house eating and drinking whatever they provide for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not, move, do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a house and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you, cure the sick who are there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into its streets and say, even the dust of your town <clears throat> that clings to our feet, we wipe off in protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. Whoever listens to you listens to me and whoever rejects you rejects me. And whoever rejects me rejects the one who sent me. The 70 returned with joy saying, Lord, in your name, even the demons submit to us. He said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this and the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. This beloved is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. And it just simply says, God, you brought me from a mighty, long way, an old traditional song. And sometimes it's good just to, to look back in the rearview mirror of life and just see where God has, has brought us from because the scripture tells us it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord. about it looking back over my life and Lord you've been good to me when I was down and out didn't have a dime you made a way so many times and Lord, you brought me from a mighty long, 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 long way. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. You have been good to me. Just sitting here thinking about it, looking back over my life. And Lord, you surely been good to me. 
when I was down and out Sometimes didn't have a dime Lord, you stepped in right on time And you brought me from a mighty, a mighty long, 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 long way Master, you've been a mother for me And Master, you've been a father for me You've been a sister And you've been a brother too And when my trouble came You wiped the tears from my eyes Oh Lord, I could have been dead Sleeping in my grave But oh Lord, you made my enemies behave And Lord, you brought me From a mighty long, 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 long way Oh Lord to me I'm just sitting here thinking about it looking back over my life and you you you've been so good to me when I was down and out sometime didn't have one dime you step right right in on time and lord you brought me from a mighty long 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 way and i just want to say thank you i just want to say lord i thank you for your mercy, thank you. For your grace, thank you. For a new day, thank you. The more I call your name, Jesus, I have to say thank you. Oh, thank you, Lord. For your goodness, I thank you. Oh, and Lord, you brought me from a Mighty long way And I just have to say thank you Thank you For your mercy I thank you For your grace I thank you And for saving me thank you Thank you Oh thank you Thank you, Lord. I, 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 I thank you. <laughs> oh, Lord, I thank you. You brought me from a mighty long, 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 long way. Amen, amen, and amen again. Thank you so much, Dr. Brown. Yes.
So I don't usually talk about our national or secular holidays in worship. But today, thinking about the events that we are living in and through, I felt compelled at least to tie them to this text today, or at least that's where the Holy Spirit led me. So in this country, tomorrow marks the celebration of the formation of this nation. And that celebration and remembrance is tied to the Revolutionary War. That war, along with others that were waged in those early years, the War of 1812, the Civil War, they focused at least in part on the existence or continuing existence of this nation. However, later wars were fought more on national interest than they were on imminent threat, even when isolated attacks had taken place. See, the American Revolution broke the ties that bound and obligated the people who resided within the 13 colonies. It broke those ties to the crown and the rule of England. So if the Civil War pitted brother against brother, the Revolutionary War engaged cousin against cousin. And those who were in conflict, at least for the most part, they shared a heritage, a history, and a genealogy. And this new country, while distinct, maintained much of the old that it came from. Even the new flag, the symbol of the new identity and the resulting shift in the allegiance of the people adopted the same colors and a similar imagery as the country they were rejecting. So I say all that to say, Beloved, at least I believe this war is not and never has been an instrument of peace. In fact, for me, it is the full escalation of conflict. To me, war fully rejects peace as an outcome. War is way too destructive to have any party with peace. All we need to do today is to look at the escalating violence in Nigeria, the continued aggression against the Palestinian people in Israel, and the Russian assault on the Ukraine to, wish it to, to, to witness that those who wage war are certainly not seeking peace. I believe that there are many other objectives that are motivating those actions, no matter how we dress them up in pretty language. The Declaration of Independence was no different. It presents a beautiful vision of equality and equity, but unfortunately the writers and the signers of that document only affirmed the humanity of their own kind. While they were calling for their own liberty, they were enslaving people of African descent. They were benefiting from the genocide of the indigenous peoples here. And they were discounting those who did not own land. And if there's anything to said to be true about that document, at least they were honest in that their claims were totally only about men. But if there is any good news in the story of this Declaration of Independence, it is that peace seekers across the years have claimed the beauty and the truth of those words as their own vision, despite the hypocrisy and the depravity of those who adopted it 
first. You see, those principles hold more power than the people who mocked their own words through their actions and their attitudes. The exercise of peace seeking reclaims that power, that power that is yielded in war and reminds us that power in and of itself is morally neutral. The aim and the means and the outcomes of the use of power, those are the things that make the difference. So what does that have to do with the text for today? Jesus gave his disciples use of his power and authority, we are told in the lesson we heard from Luke today. And that indicates that they will prevail over the manifestation of evil in the world. It indicated that kingdom work, not kingdom work, kingdom work is the work of peace. But what I find interesting is that Jesus in his instructions on how to approach those that they encounter is the extension of a blessing. The Common English Bible translates it this way, may peace be on this house. The envisioned outcome of the kingdom begins with peace, with peace resting on all communal units. Peace. To paraphrase theologian Karl Dortzbach, Beloved, peacemaking is fundamentally an activity that is connected to others. In other words, the manner in which we deal with conflict, peacemaking, the manner in which we deal with peacemaking reveals our hearts and our core identity. You see, bringing peace into conflict and going with peace out of conflict is to bear the very presence of God as God's own beloved. And that happens right in the midst of conflict. You see, I believe it is peacemaking that truly bears the blessing of God because in the activity of peacemaking, we actually become the peace of God. We are what people in conflict know about God. We are the presence of peace in the midst of chaos and calamity. So despite their call to be peacemakers, the public witness of followers of Christ often wraps itself up in conflict. There are divisions over who gets in and who's excluded. That happens in the church. Who gets to sit in the pew or the pulpit? Division, conflict. People who are walking in two or many entirely different directions claim to be following the same Jesus. And while they're claiming to follow the same Jesus, they are putting limits on what it means to love your neighbor. Something that Jesus did not do. To me, that is certainly not the vision of the peace that Jesus modeled for us, modeled for his disciples then and modeled for us today. The model vision of Jesus is about reconciliation and restoring and renewing relationships within and beyond the community of discipleship. 
And what I noticed in the text today is that that renewing and reconciling and restoring is often clothed in the practice of abundant hospitality. I remember serving on a board once of an, um, an organization that was experiencing a lot of internal conflict. And the president of the board said simply, we need to break bread together. We need to stop talking and just sit down and eat together. Because the sharing of a meal in her reasoning would break down the barriers of communication and would lead to more camaraderie and understanding among the factions that have come to exist on the board. Beloved, there really is something that happens when a dish is passed from one hand to another. It's a simple way to begin to reach out. The practice of reaching out can become a habit if you let it. The giving and the sharing and the receiving can embed itself in our behavior and shift our attitudes and lower our defenses. So is it any wonder that Jesus sent his disciples out with, this, with these instructions about entering someone's home? In his commissioning, he reveals his strategy, his strategy of stimulating hospitality before anything else. See, beloved, hospitality encourages care and concern and compassion. Hospitality involves serving and vulnerability. Hospitality turns strangers and even enemies into community because hospitality decenters itself. As Carl Dortzbach notes, we have the gospel backwards, beloved. We speak a gospel of peace with God, the God that walked among mankind, and we say, may I give you peace. But then we forget that we're supposed to be peacemakers. We're supposed to be peace givers. However, in this passage from Luke, it's curious to me that Jesus also seems to encourage us to give up on the reticent and the obstinate people. We heard it in there. It says, this is a kind of shake the dust off you kind of text that reminds us that we have to let some folks go. That's if you read that text on the surface. But as those of you who have been in Bible study with me, you know we should never just take the text literally because a more careful reading of this text says that this admonition is not against individuals at all. And we heard in the scripture, it says it's a protest. It's resistance if you will, and it's against a town or a community or an institution. Because discipleship always comes by invitation. It is never going to come by force. And the kingdom is never going to be realized by conquest or coercion, only by choice, and by agency. So beloved, when we focus so much on individual human beings and their individual actions, we miss the real opposition to the kingdom. The real opposition to kingdoms are systems and institutions. In the words of Marjorie Hewitt, Shocking, the commitment to social justice involves us in a never-ending process 
of analyzing the conditions that make for ill being in our society, and then discerning the most gospel-centered ways of addressing those issues. The most gospel-centered way based on Luke's account is to build and nurture communities of peace. Jesus warns his disciples against moving too quickly from one place to another. Jesus encourages them to minister where they have receptivity and welcome and only to move on when those elements are absent. I also believe that that's why Jesus sent them out two by two so that when they were not well received, they would be encouragers of one another. They would gather the strength to move on to the next venture from one another. Again, the model of how we are meant to live in relationship, not alone to do in relationship, not alone. And I believe, beloved, that because the disciples were focused on the main thing, that being peace, they realized blessed results. Beloved, I believe that peace that is received can overcome the powers of <clears throat> the powers that oppress people. Peace that is welcome can change systems and institutions that hold communities bound up. Peace that is embraced and invited can, to break bread provides a victory that no war can ever win. Beloved, today I say to you as, as you either celebrate or reflect on this holiday of Independence Day, that you make peace your goal, make peace your guide, make peace your gift to others. I pray that peace will be in all of our faith communities, I pray that peace will be in all of our political dialogue. I pray that peace will be in all of our homes. Beloved, may peace be our invitation. May peace be our encouragement. May peace be our constant companion on our journey, individually and collectively because I truly believe this without holy peace. Beloved, those who seek to pervert power in order to, to oppress and to conquer, they are going to have their way. So may we, the beloved people of God, be peacemakers and peacekeepers. May peace be the way for all of us. Amen. of the living God fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God fall fresh on me. Melt me, mold me, be 
me, Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Mold me, melt me, fill me, use me, Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Amen, amen. We need a fresh falling of the spirit every day. Please join me now as we use the words of the Apostles' Creed to profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We will continue our service with prayers of intercession. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the church, the creation, and all in need, saying, Gracious God, hear our prayer. Lord of the harvest, you send your church into the world to proclaim Christ's new creation to all. Renew the church as it carries out your mission of peace and healing. We pray for ministries everywhere that strive to accompany your people. Gracious God, your creation abounds with flowing waters and diverse creatures. Guide the work of climate scientists as they develop and advocate ways to restore Earth's natural balance. Motivate humankind to adopt lifestyles that protect and sustain the Earth. Gracious God, you guard the nations. Let no leaders exalt themselves, but lift up the most vulnerable and work for the good of all. Send your spirit to eradicate classism and inequity, violence and war, poverty and hunger. Gracious God, we ask your special blessing, O oh God, on those affected by recent Supreme Court decisions and those who feel anxious about the precedent that has been set. Gracious God, Mothering God, you care for all people in need. We pray for those injured and killed in the Amtrak crash in Missouri and for their families. 
We pray for those grieving the death of 51 migrants who were trapped in a truck in Texas. Today, God, we also pray for those who are part of this community, who we name before you now. And this morning, prayers for healing and comfort are asked for Peter and Rose, Lamar, Jeanette, and family, Maria, Louisa, Sherry, Irvin, Monte, Julia, Pastor Richard, Lee and Pat, Pastor Cara, Pastor Brenda, Medlin, Thomas, Medlin, Durrett, Pastor Katrina and family, Zanitha and Clement, Bernice, Bruce and Rita, Paul, Nora, Cecil, Wade, Emmy, Ernestine, and Glenwood. We pray that all people beaten through illness of mind, body, and spirit will feel your protective hand and our tangible care for them. Gracious God, oh God, you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending into us your Holy Spirit. Direct the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America by that Spirit, as this church prepares to gather in assembly that we might have a right judgment in all things and rejoice at all times in your peace. We continue to pray for our synod, our churchwide body, and our bishops as they reckon with the issues of racism in our church that have harmed so many. Bring an end to racism in our churches and our communities. Let everyone know your goodness by the love we show one another. Gracious God. We also now pray for ourselves. Hear now the desires of our hearts. Amen. And, you know, we let you work it out. And I learned that because I always keep things in my heart and I know I can work it out myself. Not knowing that the Lord said, let someone help. But that this time, this morning, I'm asking your prayers for my family because right now I lost my house to the scammers. The scammers come and take over my house during the COVID. And I've been going through a whole lot. Never say anything to anyone. Try to work it out. Pride, I'm telling you. Pride is one of the worst things can happen to a person. You know, you keep everything in shame to talk about it. But I'm free from that. I am free from pride because I said pride is on my feet this morning. Because I can be able to speak and talk about what is happening to me. I'm about to move. I don't know where I'm going, but the good Lord said in Isaiah, I read in it, he said in Isaiah 43, it said, if you don't mind, he said, 
For now that this now now thus saith the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have welcomed you. I have called you my name, and you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will I will be with you. Through the rivers, they shall not consume you. But when you walk through the fire, you shall not be consumed. You shall not be burned, and the, and the flame shall not consume you. I believe what the Lord said in this chapter, and I've been holding on to it from this month. Because at this time, we don't know where God is leading us to leave my home. They give us until July the 7th, but I know my God is going to give me a longer time than that to come out of this place. Because this is where I know from I come to this country. And if the, somebody can sit on a computer and scam and work and know what is going on and get me, well, I know that the good Lord is going to protect me. He's going to carry me through, me and my family, right through. Not only me, but all that I represent, because other people are going through the same situation that I am. But I feel to thought this morning that I am free. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, as I stand before you this morning, Father God, I, I thank you for all your blessings. I thank you for your grace and your mercy. And I thank you, Father God, that you are the great interceptor. Uh, as our sister said, there are a lot of people, especially people over 65, that has been scammed. Father God, I ask that your spirit, your Holy Spirit, Father God, will help them, will guide them. I pray that your peace will be upon them, Father God. God, we just surrender all to you. And as my sister say, if we go through the fire, if we go through the storm, the waters, you will be there. So God, let us stand on your promises to know that your, 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 your promises are sure. Sometimes things doesn't come out the way we want it. But Father God, your promise is what we stand on. So let us all stand on your promises, especially the people that 65 and over. Because when you read the AARP magazine, you'd be, there's so much scams. So let us be mindful, Father God. Let us, be, let us have discernment, give us discernment to know what is scam from what is authentic. This and all things, Lord. I hand over to you, because you said to cast your cares and your burdens. We are to cast it on you because you care for us. So God, we are casting Sister Doret and anyone else that's experiencing this trauma. We cast them on you, Lord, because I know that I know that I know that you will work it out. Amen. <clears throat> We have two in the chat. First, Sister Ernestine would like to offer prayers to our sister who was scammed. My prayers are with you, and I know God will be with you during these hard times. Amen. Our sister Sonia Dingle would like to say that God has you in his hands. He will work it all out on your behalf. Stay strong. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, brothers and sisters on Zoom, for your encouragement. 
Gracious God, we remember the saints who proclaimed your reign on earth and now rest in you. Make us faithful in our witness to Christ's new creation. Gracious God, God of every time and place, in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. Forgive my clumsiness. God feeds us with the presence of Jesus Christ. You reap whatever you sow, says the Apostle Paul. So wherever we have the opportunity, let us work for the good of all, for the nurture of this family of faith and for the ministry to a world in need. Let us now give joyfully as we present our tithes and offering. And I'd ask that you hold up your checks, your telephone, your checkbooks, whatever means that you're using this morning to offer your sacrifice to God. Let us pray together. In offering our gifts, as well as the living of our days, may we not grow weary of doing what is right, but commit to speaking up for the voiceless, healing the broken, feeding the hungry, and all those mercies which are such a part of your heart and hopes for all of your beloved. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please rise as you are able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is a right good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give our thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. Through, <clears throat> through your prophets, you call all persons, even the enemies of your people. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. You have given him power over all things. Even demons are tamed and the evil one falls like lightning before him. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the, healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism and suffering, by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. In the night in which our Lord was to be betrayed, he took bread. He gave thanks for it. He broke it. And he gave it to all who were present, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Each time you eat of this bread, do this in remembrance of me. Then as was the custom after supper, he took the cup. He blessed it, gave thanks for it, and then gave it to all who were there saying, take and drink. This is the cup of the new covenant, my blood shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you drink from this cup, do this in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all under the sound of my voice and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that me may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood, that all might be inheritors of the fruits of the Spirit. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at the heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with all... <clears throat> through your son Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All glory and honor are yours, my almighty God, now and forever. And God's people said, gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Grant us peace.
Beloved of God, my brothers and sisters, let us all commune together now. The body of Christ, broken for you. The blood of Christ, shed for you. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen us all and keep us in God's grace. through this feast of life and salvation. Shine the light of Christ on our path that we may do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you now and forever. Amen. Receive now the charge and the blessing. People of God, go forth from this time together and imitate the Holy One in all you do. Live with love, speak with kindness, touch with gentleness, walk with humbleness, and build up the kingdom of God. Go forth into the world and live in love just as Christ has lived in and through you. Amen. Lord, as we leave from this place, surround us with your peace and love that we may take healing and hope to all others in your holy name. Amen. Peace. Love your neighbor. Thanks be to God. time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Upon the mountain, my Lord spoke. Out his mouth came fire and smoke. Every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I I will pray every time I feel the spirit moving in my heart I will pray all around me looks so fine ask the Lord if all was mine every time I feel the spirit moving in my heart I will pray every time I feel the spirit moving in my heart I will pray Jordan's river chill and cold chill the body not the soul every time i feel the spirit moving in my heart i will pray every time i feel the spirit moving in my heart i will pray every time i feel the spirit moving in my heart i will pray every time i feel the spirit moving in my heart i will pray up on the mountain my lord spoke out his mouth came fire and smoke every time i feel the spirit moving in my heart i will pray every time i feel the spirit 
spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Good Shepherd Beloved gathered here in the sanctuary and those who are online. Thank you so much for thinking it not robbery to spend some time in the presence of God and your brothers and sisters this morning. As always, it is my hope and prayer that something said today or sung today or simply being in the presence of God and God's beloved, that your spirits have been lifted and you have been given sustenance for your journey. God bless you all. See you Wednesday morning for prayer and devotion, Wednesday evening for Bible study, and back here again next Sunday. God bless you. Is everybody still there? Or did she end it? I don't know. It looks like she ended it, right? Yeah. She usually says bye. It sounds like no today. What happened? What happened? Nothing. Nothing happened. No, she's coming back, guys. Okay, thank you, Tom. Fast is coming back. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Mom, we're leaving now. Okay. What's wrong? Okay. If you're too upset, maybe we, we shouldn't. What are you doing? Change the camera to the computer camera. There we go. Do you want me to stay? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, mommy, I'm waiting. Yeah. I'm right here. Yeah. What's wrong? I You have your bag? Oh, your bag's in the car. No, I'm not here. Oh. I'm just trying on my. Okay. Sounds a lot. I wanted to put it away before you leave. It it always sits right there. Oh, I put the wind over there.
I'm, I'm staying right here, okay? What's wrong? Things are very boring. Okay. 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 Thanks. You're welcome. A lot of people in the sanctuary today. Pastor Bull, she's working her way. Okay. Thank you, Tom. We'll be assembled. She'll be here. Okay. So your bag's working out? Yeah, I like it. I think so. You got used to backpacks. And I know. <laughs> For that week, yeah. The one that I carried, I like that one for travel. It's so slick. It's so slim. Yeah, I like it. It's so comfortable. I'm so thankful that I decided to just pull the trigger on it when I did. Because when we were in Mexico, it really came in handy. No, this trip really came in handy. It's already paid for this one, if you ask me. Yeah. <laughs> you can pack it up like a little bag and throw it in just in case you need it. That's good. Even longer than I wanted it to. <clears throat> You too. Okay, here she comes. I don't know. <laughs> that is such a bad habit. Good morning, Pastor. Good morning, Hi. Sherry. Good morning, Sonia. Pastor. Mother <laughs> Shepherd. Oh, Vioka, I see you there too. Hi. Helen, Frederica. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, Pastor. Good sermon. And, Pastor, thank you for my book. You sent me the uh, the Bible study. Yes, I did, yeah, just a second, Jovi. Um, 
What what'd you say, Sherry? I said you sent me the Bible study, but thank you so much. You are very welcome. Sherry, I told you, I said, if you can't to ask you for it. Yeah, I said if you can't, well, I knew you couldn't come pick it up, so <laughs> I just sent it to you. <laughs> thank you so much. You're very welcome. It's so good to see you this morning, Mother Shepherd. I'm glad to see you too. I hope you enjoyed worship. I enjoy it very much. Amen. Amen. Okay. <laughs> always a pleasure to see you, Mother Shepherd. I, I always do. <clears throat> Oh, All right, everyone. Have a blessed have, week. Have a blessed Bye. week. Okay. And I'll see you Wednesday morning for prayer um, and Wednesday evening for Bible study and then back here again next Sunday. Okay. Have a good week. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye, Pastor. See you. Oh. What? what? Okay, mommy. I'm going to do this with you. Okay, bye bye. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye, Tom. Take care, Sherry. Good to see you.